Miss La Rosa coming at ya. Make sure you hit the link button below to subscribe. Just kidding, y'all know I'm not YouTube famous. But we can dream, can't we? So we're going to review converting fractions and percents and scientific notation into square roots. Um, we're gonna be comparing and ordering numbers and the easiest way to do that is to turn them into decimals. So let's review how to do that. So first, we're going to focus on just this section here. We're gonna focus on turning fractions into decimals. The way that we turn decimals into fractions, two different ways. What we did last year was we made sure to divide. Remember when you're dividing, the top dog gets the house. So if I have this number one fourth, my top number goes inside my box for division. My bottom number goes on the outside and I just divide the standard way. Drop in your decimal, four does not go into one. Four goes into 10 two times. 10 minus eight is two. Bring down another zero. Four goes into 20 five times. And it comes out pretty. So one fourth is a decimal, it would be 0 0.25. Three and one ninth, if we have a mixed number like this, we still are gonna divide that fraction. And then when we're turning it into a decimal, we can't forget that three out front. So first, we're just gonna worry about that fraction. Just worry about that one ninth. Top dog gets the house. Nine goes outside. If you had my class last year, we talked about the trick when you have a nine in the denominator. How many times does nine go into 10? Once. Subtract, bring down a zero. Oh my goodness, what's happening here? Nine into 10 once. We have repeating, we have a repeating one. So again, we get that point one repeating. When you have a nine in the denominator, Whatever your numerator is, that number is going to be what repeats over and over and over again. So we have 0.1 repeating, but that's not it. We can't forget that 3 out front. So this would be 3.1 repeating for our decimal form. You could also do these in the calculator. Again, it's just division. So for this first one, I would do 1 divided by 4. I get 0 0.25. You guys don't get this fraction one. I'm just using the regular Desmos, the Virginia SOL. You don't get this. So don't get used to having that there. The next one, three and one ninth. So for the three and one ninth, do one divided by nine. You see, you get that point one repeating, but then don't forget to put that three out front. Don't forget to put that three out front. We've got three examples down there. Go ahead, pause the video, try those three on your own, and we'll see how you do. Once you've gotten your answer, type an X in the chat so we know you're ready to share. Type an X in the chat when you're done so we know you're ready to share. Hopefully for these answers, you got 0 0.4, 1.25, and 2.25. Sorry, that was 1.125. It's kind of ugly written in there. Let us know if you guys have any questions on this, but if we're good, we're gonna slide over and convert percents into decimals. Now we're gonna convert from percents to decimals because again, we need to turn everything into decimals so we can compare place value. So we're just gonna focus on this box here, this percent to decimal section. So to convert from a percent to a decimal, again, if you had me last year, I say the craziest things, but um, I can tell you for a fact, this is Beyonce's favorite thing to do because to convert a percent to a decimal, you move that decimal to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Holding for laughter. All right, so that's the trick because we're multiplying something times 100 because it's a percent. I'm going to multiply it, figure out how much it is out of 100. 
So for me to turn this into a decimal, I move my decimal point to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. I add my decimal point, And what do I fill in with my extra jump? A zero. So this would mean 1.5% in decimal form would be 0 0.015. Boom. My next number, 281%. Where's the decimal point? It's at the end after the one. Remember math people, we work smarter, not harder. If we don't have to draw that decimal point in there at the end, we're not going to. So if there's no decimal in the percent, remember it's at the end, it's just invisible. Again, like Beyonce says, we move that decimal point to the left to the left, put it in there. So we should get 2.81. Sorry, let me fix that. Yay, white out. So we should get 2.81 for our decimal there. On the calculator, this is going to look a little bit different. On your calculator, you're going to type the percent. So let's go to that first problem. We had 1.5, and then we hit the percent button. It's over by the fraction. But it says percent of what? We've talked about percent meaning out of 100. But when we're thinking about percents, we also think of it, how much of our whole do we have? So our whole, when we're working with percents, is 1. The fraction is out of 100. But all together, we're trying to figure out how much it is out of 1. So when you see this 1.5% of, you're going to need to put 1 after it and then it'll give you the decimal form. So in the calculator, let's make a note. You would do the percent, then you type of one. Very important. If you're doing that in the calculator, you need to know what to put it out of. The whole is one. So the next one, 281%. Again, my whole, when I'm looking about decimal, looking about percents and decimals, my whole is one. So I do 281% of one, and we get that decimal, 2.81. So go ahead, try these next three on your own, either the calculator or the Beyonce trick, whatever makes your heart happy. Try those three for me. Pause the video. When you have your answer, put an X in the chat. Don't type the numbers. We want everybody to have a chance. Type an X in the chat, and then we'll check. Good luck. All right. Hopefully you got two in 14 hundredths, seven hundredths, and six tenths for your answers. Nice job, guys. If you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, feel free to move on to the next one where we talk about converting from scientific notation to decimals. OK. So now, taking our numbers from scientific notation into Desmos, I have some sad news for you. Ms. Palachek and I were talking about it this weekend. They uh, took a feature off of Desmos, and scientific notation only works if you have very small exponents. So with scientific notation, we're going to have to know how to do this by hand. But I think y'all can do it. I think we can do it. So remember, scientific notation is a way for us to write really, really, really big or really, 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 really small numbers. It's going to be in this format. It's going to be in this format. Some number times 10 to an exponent. This number in out front is going to be between 1 and 10. Between 1 and 10. It's OK if it equals 1 but it cannot equal 10. If it equals 10, we can just make it a little bit smaller and have it be one. Your E, that's gonna be your exponent. Your exponent is also the number of jumps. For those of you who don't know, this sign, it looks like a hashtag, but it also means the word number. 
The hashtag sign also means number. Again, that's just another way of math people working smarter, not harder. So that exponent, that's how many times we're multiplying by 10. So that means it's how many times our decimal is going to move. If I have a positive exponent, my number is going to be big, 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 big. So my decimal is going to jump to the right. If my exponent is negative, it's going to be a small, 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 small decimal. So my decimal is going to jump to the left. We've got a few examples down here. I'll do one and then you'll do one. Sorry, I got this little hair flying out of the side and it's bothering me. Oh, now I got hair up here bothering me. Sorry, I got too much of it. Okay, there we go. All right, first example, seven times 10 to the fourth. That's a positive four. So my decimal is gonna jump to the right four times because I'm gonna multiply by 10 four times. So what we can do is we can have the imaginary decimal point right there because it's after seven. We're not gonna write it if we don't have to. And I would jump it four times to the right. So I could go one, two, three, four, put in my new decimal, fill in with zeros. So I could, or I do get 70,000. A way that you can do it on the calculator, a way that you can do it on this calculator is I can take seven times 10, four times, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. And I can get 70,000 that way. So you can use the calculator, but you need to know for a positive exponent, you're multiplying times 10 four times. Go ahead, pause the video. Try this one on your own. 4.05 times 10 to the eighth. Again, try it on a paper and try it on the calculator. See which way you like better. Go ahead, pause the video. Put an X in the chat when you think you've got it. So if you're doing it the paper way, again, we do 4.05. I'm gonna move my decimal eight times. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and fill in those zeros. We got a lot of them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six zeros at the end. And then we have 405. So we have 405 million for that number, 405 million. Sometimes people think that the exponent is the number of zeros on the end, but that's not true. This one, our exponent's eight, but we only have six zeros at the end. So make sure that you're really checking to see that you moved the decimal and not just added zeros. In the calculator, if we do 4.05 times 10, eight times, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there we go. We get our 405 million. So those were examples with a positive exponent. Now let's try some with a negative exponent. I see negative signs in front of my exponents. So that means I need to jump my decimal point to the left now. So this number looks very similar to the first one. It's just the exponents are different. So I need to move my decimal point the other way. So here again, I put my decimal point at the end because it's negative. My decimal jumps to the left. It's like a number line. If you have negative numbers, those are on the left side of the number line. If you have positive numbers, that's on the right side of the number line. So maybe that'll help you remember which way do I jump. So I'm gonna move it four times to the left. So I go one, 
two, three, four. I've got my decimal. I fill in with zeros. I get point zero point zero 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 seven. So I get seven ten thousandths for that one. On these first two problems on our calculator, we were multiplying times 10 with a positive exponent. If you remember from last year when we did negative powers of 10, if we have a negative exponent with 10, that means we divide by 10. So for this problem, if I want to do it in my calculator, I'm going to do 7 divided by I do have to do 7 divided by parentheses 10 four times. So 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10. Close my parentheses. And what do I see? Oh, it gives me that number in scientific notation. So again, you're going to have to do the paper and pencil way because it's not going to work on Desmos. Sorry about that. At least we found out together. And then the last one, 8.3 times 10 to the negative 2. Pause the video. Try this one out on your own. Put an X in the chat when you got it. I move my decimal point two times to the left. So I get zero point. Oh, Andrea. Again, yay white out. So I get 0 0.083 for my decimal. This one I think should work in the calculator because our exponent's not very big. So we would take 8.3 divided by my parenthesis 10 two times. So 10 times 10. Close my parenthesis, and this time it gives me that decimal, 0 0.083. So again, sometimes you'll be able to do it with your calculator, sometimes not. Because of that inconsistency, I recommend getting comfortable with the paper method because you're always going to have that. So if you have questions with us, please let us know, and then we'll keep on keeping on with our lesson. Bye, guys.